Hey everybody, it's Louise here from Wildflower Wool. Thanks so much for stopping by my design space. This is where I design, I create, and I knit. I've recently just published a new shawl pattern called Spring Garden. This is the start of a new shawl of the, the same pattern, Spring Garden. And if you notice, this fun little stitch here, there's a knot stitch right here. See, there's a little knot and it creates some a nice little lace detail. I'm going to show you how that stitch is, is knit. I've written out step by step in the pattern, but I'm also going to provide this video link in the pattern because sometimes just seeing that stitch knit is a lot easier than just reading it. So what I'm doing here is I'm crossing, I'm switching yarns now. I'm going to knit with my white yarn, but I want to catch this yarn. So I'm just going to bring it forward and then see how when I start knitting with the white yarn, it's going to catch that blue and just tie it in there. Just not, I mean, not actually tie it, but it's going to catch it and then it's going to get caught in that I-cord border. Let me switch here. Blue is coming around, knitting with the white. So I'm starting out here. I'm going to knit two stitches because that's our I cord border. So those two stitches are knit. Now the knot stitch, I'm going to just explain it and then I'll demonstrate it to you. The knot stitch is knitting three stitches together, but you're going to leave these three stitches on the left hand needle. Then you're going to knit the first stitch again. Then you're going to knit the next two together. And then you're going to repeat that knot stitch all the way across to the last two stitches. The last two stitches are always slipped purlwise with the yarn in front because that makes the other side of our I cord edging. So let me demonstrate this. So the knot stitch, we're going to knit three stitches together. So we're going to get three stitches. We're going to knit them together. We're going to leave these stitches on the left hand needle. We knit the first stitch again, pull that up through and slide it to the right needle. Then we're going to knit the next two stitches together. and slide that to the right needle. So see how we have three stitches here? That's what we want. We started out with our three on the left hand needle and we want to end with three on the right hand needle. Doing the knot stitch, there's no increasing or decreasing going on. All we're doing is we're just playing with these stitches. We're twisting them around to come up with this little textured knot stitch. So let me show that again to you. We're gonna knit three stitches together so this is where it helps if you have a point to your needle. If your needle tip is a little too blunt, you're going to have a hard time picking up those stitches. So we're going to knit these together. So as I knit here, I'm going to pull through. It's helpful that I've switched colors here. So you can see I've got a new loop on my right needle. There's the first of our three stitches. The three together still stayed on the left needle, so now I'm going to knit the first stitch together, or sorry, just knit the first stitch, slide it on to the right hand needle. The next two stitches are knit together, and that slides to the right needle. So now we've got another little cluster of three stitches. Now if for some reason, when you're picking up, sometimes if your yarn splits, um, I talked about using pointy needles. The other thing is if you're using a needle size that's a little too small, that may cause you difficulty getting in to those three stitches. I've knit the shawl on a larger needle. Just so making the knit three and the knot stitch is going to be easier, but also to give the overall shawl a nice loose drape. It just is flowing nice. It's nice and soft and comfy. So you can check your needle size and maybe try a needle a larger needle if you're finding the knit three is tricky. So sometimes when you put your needle in and you're going to pull this stitch up, ah, perfect timing. This one did it. See how I've caught. 
Can you see that right there? There's that extra little blue thread there. Take that out. If you find that you're catching when you're going in to pick up those three, that you're one of the other plies on the needle, my, like my blue threads are catching, take your needle out and just give this a, a pull down just to try to get those loose threads out of the way and then go in again. That usually solves that problem. And there you go. You've got a nice stitch with nothing Nothing, no other threads or anything that's been split caught on there. So I'm going to leave that on there, my needle. Knit the first stitch again. Oops, okay. So now, see, I've got, that's not how, I'm going to undo this. So if you need to undo, Just carefully and do it. So now I'm going to try that again. I'm going to go in and wrap and pull it through. Now that's better. Now I still have all three of those blue stitches on my left hand needle. Now I'm going to go and knit the first one again, slide it off, knit and knit the next two together and slide those off. So if for some reason, it's always a good idea, take a quick look here. Now the first two are always just two because that's our I-cord edging. But you want to make sure we've got our little groupings of three stitches. If for some reason this one only had two stitches and you wanted to undo it, what I would do, I catch those two stitches from the row below, pull out, catch that stitch from the row below, and pull out just like that if you have to pull out it's just that easy so see the knot stitch really is quite easy isn't it it's not not too tricky and it creates a nice fun little texture and some lace so the important thing is just making sure you, you're knitting three together and once you've done the stitch that you still have three stitches on this side. Okay, so I've worked across the row and I'm just finishing my last knot stitch. There's my grouping of three. Now I've come to the end and we're never ever going to knit the last two stitches. They are always slipped with yarn forward. So we're going to bring our yarn forward between the needle tips and we slip them purl wise. So purlwise, just as if you were going to purl that stitch, we slip them. And that is creating the I-cord edge. So now we're going to turn our work. And then on the next row, we're going to knit these first two stitches. So we're always knitting the first two, and the last two are slipped with the yarn in front. That's what's creating the nice little I-cord edge. So now you're going to wonder if you ever panic and you think you go to knit this first stitch and you look at where your yarn's attached and you're thinking, oh my gosh, it's way back here. Don't worry. That's where we want it to be for the I-cord. So we just pull that around. You don't have to pull it any extra tight. Just, just knit two. And now the pattern row I'm on is a purl row. So I'm just going to purl across this row and then when I turn it around, I'll be back on a right side row. So the last thing, so that's really all there is. So we talked about the knot stitch. The I-cord edging is just remembering you're always knitting the first two stitches, even though your yarn is not attached at the end stitch, that's fine. When you get to the end of the row, bring your yarn forward and those last two stitches are always slipped. And then every time you come back to a right side row, both of your yarns are going to be on the right hand side. You're going to want to carry up the non-working color up the side. Okay, so here I am, my last two stitches. I don't want to knit them. My yarn's already in front because I was on a purl row. I just slip those two stitches. Now I'm gonna turn my work. I'm on a right side row. Both of my yarns are here 
and I am ready to switch to my contrasting color, which is going to be my blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the white forward. I'm going to start knitting with my blue and see how that white yarn is just going to be caught up into that blue and it's going to carry it forward for me. And that is how you're going to want to just make sure that non-working yarn is caught. So every time you come back to the right side row, you're going to want to catch that yarn. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this helps. And like always, if you have any questions, pop on over to Ravelry, leave me a comment, leave me a question, and I'll get back to you. Happy knitting and enjoy.